Welcome back to Grok Talk. Coming up uh, in the next segment, Carly Fiorina. But right now, we have Jorge Mesa Tejada for education. Good morning, Jorge. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Great to have you on. So what's our subject this week, sir? Okay, I thought we would talk about something that everyone uses, but no one knows really what it is. SAUs. Oh, yeah. The school administrative units. Now, are those just like a New England thing or a New Hampshire thing, or are those everywhere? They are only indigenous to Vermont, New Hampshire, and Ber- and uh, Maine. Okay. They're only in the three states. So our, to our uh, listeners uh, outside of this area, you will not understand what an SAU is until Jorge explains it to you. Go ahead. Okay. And they were uh, founded around the early, uh, around 1919, thereabouts, to help the Commissioner of Education get a hold of what was happening in the many school districts in the state, in, in, in New Hampshire specifically, for instance, Hampstead had eight uh, school districts for a town of basically 800 people. And the reason for that was that schools in those days were run by churches. So each school became a school district. Okay, so they, the poor uh, commissioner who had to report to the governor as to the status of uh, schools once a year, couldn't do it, couldn't travel to all those places, so they came up with the idea of, in those days it was called School Supervisory Union. And the purpose of them was to provide administrative services that would be too expensive for any one district to, to pay for, and so spread the, the cost between several districts. And so they created a mandatory marriage of districts, man, uh, made by the State Board of Education of school districts in the state. Right now, there are 98 uh, SAUs in New Hampshire. Now, so n- listen to the name, a, state, a school administrative unit. It's not an instructional unit. Every school district has to belong to it, but the SAU cannot mandate anything on the school district. And that's under New Hampshire law, correct? Right, right. The school district districts choose a superintendent who is the head of the SAU, but when he is acting, when he's uh, talking to any individual school district, he's talking to them as their superintendent, not as the head of the SAU. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, that's the way it was intended to be, and it was that way for many years. But lately, it has become that the SAU itself is telling the districts what to do, and that's illegal. And unfortunately, the uh, school, the people, the voters, and especially the school board members, don't have the foggiest as to what their rights and, and responsibilities are as, as school board members, and let the superintendent run all over them to to wit what is happening for them. If you have been following that, or hey, yes, yeah, isn't this sort of uh, in the same vein that we see more and more our elected officials and basically the citizenship? bowing to the authority of, quote-unquote, the professionals. We, you know, I see this uh, with the select boards where the town administrator is oftentimes the de facto head instead of the select board until really push comes to shove. Um, Obviously, I've seen it in in my uh, hometown uh, with the school board where the superintendent basically does exactly what you're saying. You know, they, they tell the school board what to do along with the, New Hampshire School Board Association, and the, <laughs> I hate to say it, but the school board members just seem to be patsies for both of those two entities. You got it right, you hit it right in the head. What really happens is that superintendent, in this case, you know, takes the lead in any discussion, and because, quote, he's the superintendent, he takes over the meeting and starts telling the, the voters, his bosses, what, how, how the law is going to be. He interprets the law. And because the school board members are totally ignorant of what their uh, rights, responsibilities, and duties are, they simply agree. So what happens is the superintendent becomes a head and, and school board by default. And you, you've seen it happen in, in, in Guilford. You've seen it happen in, in other places. And here in Timberlane, you have a guy that came oh, from um, Timberlane. <laughs> Quincy. Well, Quincy, you know, where the superintendent, in fact, is law, and he's just telling the school board to, to go fly a kite. The, he has the, the uh, 
chairman of the school board signed contracts and all that. We have a vote of the school board, and to him it is okay. And if, if anyone questions him, the, uh, the, he simply says, well, it's, I have, the, I have the, the, the authority to do it, and no one questions him. Oh, and, and, he, and he calls and the, the police, too. Yeah, and if he, and if he pushes, and the, if the member pushes, yeah, he gets him arrested, yeah. And, and no one does anything. So, so the the idea of the school administrative unit was a good one when it began because uh, it, it provided transportation services, food services, uh, special education in those days. Okay, now uh, and maintenance. Now, special education, you have a director in each school district. Maintenance, you have a, a director in each school district. But the only thing they do now is transportation. Coordination, and 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 then of course they, they the, the paper mill that they call the SAU. So so the the need for an SAU is getting less and less, especially in the age of computers. It used to be a paper mill, but it's no longer that because you have it on computers. But now what they are doing is even though it's all electronic, you saw what is happening in Timberlane, and there is and there. Claiming that 91A gives them the right to, to decide what to give out, which is false, they uh, they charge people for electronic files, and then they said this is our file, meaning the SEU. No, it's not. It's the district's public file. So, so that is the problem we have with the school administrative units, and and unless school board members wake up and assert their duty and responsibilities. Uh, I don't know where we're going with this. You know, we, we might as well do away with the school board. Why, why go through this charade? Well, this is where the New Hampshire School Board Association tends to step in because um, when they go, when they offer orientation to new school board members, and unfortunately I lost my race, otherwise I would have loved to have been at this orientation, um, they tell people, listen to your superintendent. So that oh, subordinate... Yeah position of the elected officials who are supposed to be in charge right from the get-go is subverted by the folks that our taxes pay their dues. Not only that, it is more insidious than that. The last time that I was in the school board, it was in 1990 to 94, they have this, what they call school board orientation at the New Hampshire School Boards Association. So I, I didn't want to go, but I said, let me go find out what the heck is going on. And they handed you a little book, a handbook for school board members. And the first one was uh, the Ten Commandments for school board members. The first one, thou shalt not embarrass your superintendent in public. Wow. You mean uh, I'm his boss and I cannot say anything asking him about anything? How do we, okay, how that, do we fix this, Jorge? Is there a way? Is there a path? Is there a, 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 a remedy? A remedy, yes. Yes, there is a remedy, but I don't think you're going to find the incumbents. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's certainly true in my district with Sue Allen. Right. You have to groom a set of uh, voters who are willing to be to run and be elected to the school board and train them on their powers and responsibilities before they become school board members. So when they hit the ground, they hit the ground running and know exactly what their responsibilities are and are willing to assert the lawful responsibility, because that's another thing. We could we could take all the school members that we know and take them to court for deliration of duty. They swore to uphold the laws of the state of New Hampshire, and the state of New Hampshire tells the school board that you shall run the schools, shall run the schools. They don't do it. They let the superintendent do it. Why? Because, as you know, New Hampshire law is just a, uh, an enabling statute, and then what counts are the administrative rules. And watch it, and what are, watch it back's and, not. <laughs> and what are the administrative rules? That's what the Democrat, the, the Democrat writes. You know, all the, the professional staffers at the Department of Education. And uh, so they, they have been giving the superintendent more and more power. And because no one goes to the rules hearings and the 503, then they pass. So then you're saddled with that. So, I mean, I, mean so, I think that's you've hit another nail directly on the head, Jorge, and it's it's very insidious to our republic, which is the rise of the administrative state. We talk about it more in terms of the federal government with the, all of these agencies writing 
all the laws, and in some cases, like with the EPA, becoming judge, jury, and executioner. Um, exactly, because they are not elected. Right. And, you know, this is just another example of it at the local level where we should be able to say, you know, enough of it is enough. But have we, as the American people, gotten to the point where we just say, let government do it and we turn our backs on what should be our, each and every one of us, our responsibility? And how do we change that in this area of the the modern bread and circus on TV or it, popular culture or whatever? They're going to make you suffer even stronger. Oh, thank there is you. Another, there is another <laughs> group that is helping the cause, and that's called the New Hampshire School Boards Association, that we pay from our school budgets annually based, uh, you know, uh, a fee based on the number of students. No recourse. We have to pay it. And they have a, a service, in quotes, uh, to uh, for the districts to, to provide uh, examples of policies and to revise policies. And what they have been doing is where before it says, um, for instance, uh, uh, agendas for school board meetings. The chairman of the school board used to read this. The chairman of the school board shall uh, define the agenda for every for every meeting and the superintendent shall promulgate. It's, and now it says, the superintendent shall prepare the agenda for every meeting. Wow. Okay? So, and now that converts now into into participation, public participation in meetings, where before, you know, you have the public, the public opinion meetings about 10, 5 minutes at the beginning of the meeting and at the end, where each person can talk up to 3 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then you can talk about any item you want and not to exceed 3 minutes. And if, and if you go over the, the, the limit, you, can, you, can, you have to be asked to read. Well, now they're saying that the, the, the revision that was, was put in front of the Hampstead School Board last week was to say that any any member, by the way, you could talk about anything. Now we will say, propose to say, any item on the agenda that a person and the member of the public wants to discuss must be vetted by the superintendent eight days prior to the meeting. Wow. Isn't that nice? Isn't yes, that nice? And, uh, I think I've written about a couple of things like that at watchdog.org. Uh, Jorge, we're out of time. Um, we only have a couple seconds left. I wanted to thank you very much for taking some of your Saturday morning to uh, to spend it with us, and uh, I look for- forward to our conversation next month. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. All right. Thank you very much, sir. I didn't turn okay, bye. Uh, we'll there get we rid go. of the SAUs. Yeah, we do. We need to. <laughs> we need to do. Uh, somebody will do that. We need to do something to fix this, whatever that is. This is Rock Talk. We'll be right back with Carly Fiorina. Stay tuned. Okay, she's calling.